that's the dessert you can have that's super light, it's sweet, but not overly sweet. The outside's a little bit chewy and caramely. It's an angel food cake. This is not your, I was gonna say grandma's. It might be your grandma's angel food cake, but it is not the angel food cake you get in the grocery store. This one is way better and you can make it. I can make it and you can make it too. Hi, I'm Carolyn and this is the Chili Bakes gluten-free podcast, but also video. We're starting video today. So please bear with me. It may be a little kooky. Here I am in my kitchen and you're with me. Nice to have you here. Uh, we're at, making an amazing cake. I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks for success. Angel Food Cake has a very short list of ingredients, but some special techniques that are not hard. But if you have no one to walk you through it, maybe it's a little intimidating. So I'm here to do that with you. I hope to be a great gluten-free resource to you. So if you like this um, video, podcast, I don't know what I'm calling it now, rate, review, subscribe, share it with someone else. Uh, you can get lots of gluten-free recipes here that you can't tell are gluten-free. That's my whole deal. Traditional bakes, they're gluten-free. So share it with somebody who wants to know gluten-free stuff or is struggling or just loves good food. You can find it here. So let's get to baking. So special equipment for a, an angel food cake, you want a tube pan. This one's really old, it's a 10 inch. You want a hand mixer, not really that specialized. Most people have one, but you really want one. Beating this by hand is no picnic. It's kind of a pain in the butt. I've done it, don't do it. Well, you can, but I wouldn't recommend. A sifter, I know. Anybody who's listened before, you know I don't like sifting, right? Ugh. But you need it, you don't want lumps. Your angel food cake is so light and beautiful and you need to sift. And this is like the one time, pretty much the one time. Watch, I'm gonna say that and then I'll have to sift really soon. So get a sifter, use an electric mixer, have a tube pan. Um, mm, the flour I use is great for this. The cup for cup multi-purpose flour is super for making angel food cake because it's cornstarch based, which is what you need. The other ingredient uh, that you need is cream of tartar. It's in the spice aisle. It's this weird little white powder. It really helps to, I believe, stabilize your egg whites and a lot of people don't have it in their cabinet. Me, I'm a baker and I have a ton. So. That's it for the special ingredients. You're gonna need a lot of eggs, but obviously angel food cake's made of eggs. While this cake is easy, there's some simple tips that will help you have success. You absolutely do not wanna use anything plastic. No plastic. Plastic holds oil, and if you have oil, your egg whites will not beat, and it's a nightmare. So you're gonna use a lot of eggs, and you don't wanna just throw them down the drain. I've had that happen once a very, very long time ago. So. In preparation for this, I use metal or glass. I'm gonna wash them again. They're clean, I don't care, I'm washing them. I'm also washing the beaters, no oil. So I'm gonna wash this in. I'm gonna wash them in hot soapy water and dry them thoroughly. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna leave my egg whites out to get them room temperature, because then they beat better. So those are some, that's the initial thing. Make sure everything is absolutely clean. No oil on anything. Or you won't beat. Fun fact, if you forget to put your egg whites, no, <laughs> if you forget to put your eggs out so the room temperature, you can take a bowl of warm water, don't make it boiling, and you stick those eggs in there. They will get warmer quicker. Do it gently so you don't crack them. Yeah, they're going in the water. Did I forget to leave my eggs out? Yes, I did. And they're taking a nice little warm bath. So to separate the eggs, we're going to crack it on a flat surface directly into the bowl. Get rid of the shell, and then you just pick it up gently. Just kind of roll it around, and then you have a beautiful egg yolk. Boom. Now I have a perfect egg white here with no yolk. You don't want to keep cracking in on top of the egg whites, because if you do that, uh, what happens is you might accidentally break a yolk, and then all your whites are ruined. So we're going to keep a bowl to crack, a bowl for the yolks, and a bowl for the clean whites. And let's just do this again. But I need a towel, because gross. Ugh. Okay, let's try this again. Just ignore that, that's not a shell. Gently pull your egg yolk out, and put it in the egg yolk bowl. Put your egg white, that's just weird business, in the egg white bowl. See, 
not too bad. If you do break an egg, you just put it into a separate container altogether and you can make scrambled eggs. So we crack the egg, we lift up the egg yolk gently, take your rings off, if you have anything sharp, and then you just roll it between your fingers and then you have a perfect egg white, egg yolk, and transfer your egg whites into the egg white bowl. So now you have an empty bowl in the center, egg yolk bowl, egg white bowl. And this is how you do it. You make more bowls dirty, but it's better than wasting the eggs. So, and this is just what we're gonna keep doing here. And, and it, it takes, takes a while to do uh, a, a cup and a quarter of egg whites, whites but, but it's not bad. Not, not too hard, hard anyway. This is part two of egg separation. So let's measure the egg whites. We have uh, cracked two, four, six, eight eggs, eight large eggs. Oh, look at that. And it's a cup. That's a full cup. I'm gonna pour it in the bowl. And let's see if we have a quarter here. Oh my goodness. That's a cup and a quarter. So, in it goes. So for my eggs, these large eggs, it only took eight eggs, two, four, six, eight. Yeah, eight eggs, so that was good. And then we're gonna save the yolks. There's some amazing recipes you can make with yolks. Um, and our egg whites are ready. They're gonna be ready to start whipping. All right, well, the egg whites are coming to temperature. We're gonna sift the sugar and the flour. You never know when there's lumps and stuff, so we're gonna sift it. It's gonna be a cup and a quarter of granulated sugar. This is chunky, what the heck. See those hard bits? We didn't want those. All right, I sifted it on a piece of parchment paper. So now I can just transfer it, in theory, into a bowl. And we're gonna do my flour. All right. And it's one cup. No lumps, but you never know. Okay, so now I've sifted the flour once. I'm gonna put it in a bowl and I'm gonna re-sift it with the sugar, with some of the sugar. All right, and I believe the reason you do this is um, I think it helps the flour not be clumpy. So we're gonna put the flour back in. No, that's not gonna work this way. All right. Sugar and flour. So it was a quarter, a quarter of the sugar. Uh, so it was a cup and a quarter total of the sugar and we, we put a quarter cup in with the flour. And then we're just going to put some stuff away and we'll get to... Oh, first I'm going to mm, preheat the oven to 350. And you want to make sure the rack is low enough. A tube pan is very tall, so you might want to lower your oven. And then we're going to get to beating the egg whites. This is where it starts to get good. You take really simple ingredients and it turns into this magical puffy marshmallow-like cake batter. It's very exciting. So here's my flour that I sifted with a quarter cup of the sugar. My sifted... White sugar, yum. Yeah, I got a sweet tooth. Go figure, huh? And the blah, 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 kind of crazy looking egg whites. So to the egg whites we're gonna add, before we beat them, we're gonna add the salt. We're gonna add half a teaspoon of salt. Let's see if I have half a teaspoon in here. Hmm. That might be half a teaspoon, let's see. Oh, that was a pretty good visual measure. Half a teaspoon right into the egg whites. 
and a cream of tartar. It's like a tart white powder. I forget where they get it. I think they get it. This is weird. It's something on the inside of wine barrels. That sounds really weird, but I believe that's where it's from. Anyway, it almost looks like cornstarch. And it's a teaspoon of that right into egg whites. Put this away. And I have vanilla too that I'm gonna add, but I'm gonna add none. <sighs> Can't talk. I'm not gonna add it yet. So let's get to beating these suckers and see the magic happening. So on medium speed, we're just gonna beat this until it gets a little foamy. So this is nice and foamy, right? This is not well beaten. It's just foamy. So what we're going to start doing is we're going to keep beating this until it becomes um, soft peaks. And I'll show you what that is. So we're going to ramp up the heat, the heat, ah, the speed and keep going. Okay, this has been beating for about a minute and a half. And when the way you know it's soft peaks is when you lift out the beaters, it, it makes a little peak, but it's sort of soft and it doesn't stay. See how it doesn't uh, stay up? That's soft peaks. So right now I'm gonna start adding the sugar and I'm gonna add it in small doses, um, like a quarter of it at a time. I'm just gonna sprinkle some on and then I'm gonna beat it in and sprinkle more on. And we're just gonna keep doing that until the sugar's all incorporated. Another sprinkle. And you wanna use finely granulated sugar. Don't use turbinado sugar for this. You really want small bits that dissolve into the I was gonna say dough, but it's um, meringue or the egg whites. Does lady need a biscuit? You need a biscuit. Okay, we're gonna take a biscuit break. <laughs> Come on, get your biscuit. There you go. There you go. Okay, we'll get them both. Good girl. Apparently we always have to get a biscuit break in there. Okay, so we're still adding sugar. Sprinkling it in about a quarter. Actually, it was a little smaller than a quarter of it at a time. Do we just kind of divide it in bits, right? You don't want to add a cup of sugar all at once. It'll deflate the egg whites. So we're just going to add them a little bit at once. And as you're beating, the egg whites will become more and more fluffy and more marshmallow-like. It's pretty cool. That's the last of the sugar. Now I'm not, I'm not quite done mixing, but I'm gonna add the vanilla in here. We're gonna beat this till stiff peaks. We're adding about a half a teaspoon of vanilla. You're done, lady. That's all you need. Okay, so we, you can overbeat these, but you want them when they're stiff peaks. And the way you know they're stiff is, well, gosh, look at that. It's just a beautiful, I don't know, it's just, it looks like snow almost. Well, anyway, it looks like marshmallow. And so when you bring the beaters straight out, they'll stay straight up. Let's see if I can get that where you can see it. Or there you go. So it's pretty stiff. I could beat it a little bit longer. I'll do a little bit longer. Just a wee bit. There we go, stiff peaks. Oh my gosh, that's just beautiful. And now it's time to add the flour. So we're not gonna just dump all the flour and that's gonna deflate. I know there's a weird egg thing in there. We got that out of the egg whites. Um, yeah, we're not just gonna dump all the flour in cause that would just deflate all these beautifully inflated eggs. So. We're gonna whisk them in. 
You can use a rubber spatula, even though it's rubber, which I said not to use. But at the very end, I have in the past been known to fold it in, but I am going to get a whisk for this time. All right, so we're just gonna sprinkle this on here. Remember, it's the sugar and the flour that we, um, what do we do? We sifted it together. And we don't wanna stir willy-nilly. We wanna fold it over and under and rotate the bowl. I fear this was a terrible whisk. It's not big enough. I'm gonna switch to my spatula. Sorry, Emma. And we're just gonna go over it under, and we don't wanna keep mixing after it's mixed in. We're just gonna mix it till it's just mixed, and then stop and add more flour. So rotate the bowl, fold it over and under. Scrape the sides a little bit. Kind of magical. I want to make sure there's no dry spots, especially at the bottom or the edges. I have one more batch to go here of flour, and this is the last of it. All right, and you go. It feels like a bit of magic here. Just gonna make sure there's no dry patches. No flour stuck to the spatula. Oh, that looks pretty good there. All right, are we done? We might be done. Okay. Mm, this looks so fluffy and amazing. We're gonna scoop it into the pan. And it feels like thick marshmallow almost. Okay, I got a new spatula, and this is the worst. It's like, I want to say it's burrito shaped. It's not, but it's just, it's not the right shape for a spatula. What can I say? It's so ineffective. Oh. oh my gosh, it's leaving a ton of dough. What the heck? Oh my goodness. All right, we'll just try to get it all out. Okay. Oh, this is the worst spatula on the planet. The, oh. All right, let me see if I can get a better spatula. This one stinks really badly. All right. That's the one thing I run out of a lot is spatulas. Okay, so now your dough is thick enough. It's in chunks, basically. It's not evenly in the bowl. So what you're going to do is kind of gently, um, like, press it, not press it, just move your spatula and kind of spread it out evenly. So we don't want a bunch of bubbles in it, and we want it evenly spread to the edges of the pan. This is an ungreased pan. That's really important that it's ungreased. And you're going to spread it all around, try to get it even. And then, let's make sure this is even. My mom would say this crooked as a dog's leg, which is a silly thing to say, but I guess their legs are kind of crooked. Okay, now, what I'm gonna do is you can run a knife. This is a metal chopstick, and I'm gonna make sure there's no um, bubbles, no holes in the bottom. I'm just gonna swirl it through the dough. And keep swirling it. Now, you make sure it's uh, adhered to the edges, and I'm gonna make a pretty swirl pattern on top now that I've made sure there's no bubbles. And look at that, you can make it so pretty. You can make um, little points, and if, if you pull the spatula out, it makes a little um, dough point in those brown, and it makes like this pretty design. So you make whatever you want. I like the swirls, so that's what I'm doing here. Yeah, there we go. There was a hole there. No, no holes in the dough here. We're not doing that. And it's messy. It will be everywhere. But 
there you go. And there is your angel food cake. So pretty with nice swirls on top and it's going right into the 350 degree oven. So now your cake is in the oven. We put it in, it's supposed to cook for about 30 to 35 minutes. If you don't know your oven or if you've never made this recipe, always be conservative and just watch it. While it's in the oven, I'm gonna do the fun job of clean up. Ugh, not always fun. But here's a great tip. These are all covered in basically meringue type stuff, the egg whites, it's protein. If you stick this in hot water, it's gonna be a pain in the butt to clean. So what you wanna do is rinse it in cool water, then wash it. It's a lot easier that way. I learned that the hard way. So in my oven, it took 30 minutes for this sucker to uh, complete. And the way you know is you press it and it springs back a little bit. It's nicely browned. Um, and then we're gonna turn it upside down. I know that sounds crazy. You could turn it upside down over a bottle if you have one. I don't have a bottle that'll fit in the hole of your two pan, but it has little legs on it. So what you do is you put a plate over the top, or this is what I do, because I don't have a bottle. I need a bigger plate. Dang it. <laughs> no! Are none of my plates big enough? Really? Oh my gosh. Okay, well, mm, this is annoying. Well, let's see. I'm just gonna turn it over and set it on something. Set it on a tray, how's that? We just turn it upside down. Are you in there? Are you on the tray? We don't. All right. This is not how you normally use it. <laughs> I didn't have a big enough plate. Well, Yeah, turn it upside down. I hope I didn't... Okay. That was not how I wanted to do that. I don't know where my usual plate is or what I normally do, but that was sad. So you want to turn it over onto a plate or something big enough, and that was just a nightmare. So um, now we let it cool for two hours. It's upside down. I know it sounds weird, but you just leave it. It seems sketchy, but, but we're leaving it. It's hard to wait. Oh my gosh, it's hard to wait two hours to eat your cake, but you gotta let it cool completely and let it kind of, is there a stretches out and it sticks to the sides of the bowl, um, the baking pan, not in a bad way. Uh, it's really easy to get out and oh my gosh, it's gonna be so good. You're gonna love it. So when I tried to put the cake on a pan and show you, I dropped the cake. <laughs> and the cake fell out of the pan, so. Instead of it sticking to the pan like it normally would, this is what it looks like when it falls out of the bottom of the pan. Now it's still baked, but it's flat. <laughs> so I totally screwed it up because I dropped it and it fell, it detached from the pan. Normally it attaches nicely in there. Let's get this sucker out of the oven. Here is the cake. Look at that thing. You can see all the swirls. It's supposed to spring back, which it does. Maybe, yeah, it springs back. So it's out of the oven and it's nicely browned. It'll get nice and chewy. So we need to turn it upside down, which is terrifying. Last time I screwed it up and I actually dropped it because I didn't have the right size plate. <laughs> so this centerpiece will come out. So you gotta make sure you balance on that. And we're gonna turn it upside down and it's gonna cool for a couple hours. Oh, look at that time, I didn't drop it, yay. Okay, two hours to cool. That's the hardest part, is waiting. This is angel cake, angel cake, angel food cake number two. It's been hang literally hanging upside down for a day because it was Father's Day and I was doing other things. So this um, batter on there doesn't really matter. We're gonna take a serrated knife, you want a serrated knife, and we're gonna gently cut around the edge here to loosen it. All the way around. And then the inside edge. Okay, and this is, I feel like this is the best part of the cake. It's like browned and kind of caramelly. Mm, kind of chewy, I love it. and out it comes. It is still stuck to the bottom, so we're gonna cut around the bottom as well. There we 
here we go. And you want to wait till it completely cools. So when it hangs upside down, all these egg proteins, I guess they kind of stiffen up and it makes this um, matrix that holds up the cake or I think, I feel like I'm making this up, but um, when it hangs upside down, it keeps a nice um, height to it. Look at that beautiful cake. And we're just gonna empty, empty it. <laughs> we're gonna dump it onto a plate. Oh, well, it's a little weird on the bottom, but that's okay. Um, so you could put fruit on the top. Honestly, this wasn't my best bake ever, but that's okay. It will taste amazing. And that's the best part. And it's gluten-free, which means I can eat it and all your gluten-free friends can eat it. So you're gonna cut it out with a sawing motion, just very small back and forth. And I can see I didn't do a very good job getting all the air bubbles out. This side looks better. Look at that. Pretty beautiful cake. It's soft, moist. It's amazing. Oh, I can't wait to eat this. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to style this. Here's how I like to eat my angel food cake. I like to sometimes put a dusting of powdered sugar just to make it look pretty on the plate. And then some fresh berries here. I have blueberries and blackberries. And maybe... A little strawberry. We could slice up some strawberry on there. And that's how I like to eat it. It's such a light and beautiful cake that um, I don't want to frost it or anything. I feel like that kind of ruins it. But fresh fruit is always a nice compliment to it. And that's what I would do. It looks great to me. Um, yum. I can't wait to eat this, but I'm going to take a picture of it first. So there's the angel food cake. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm rambling. So the bake's over and you're left with this. This pan looks like a nightmare. I mean, you could eat it off because honestly, this is kind of my favorite part of the cake. Yeah, I could eat this clean, but that would take me a while. Pro tip, soak it in cold water. This will come right off. You don't even have to scrub. How cool is that? So that's it for the angel cake. Now it just comes down to eating it. <laughs> Irish like to eat it with my hands. Maybe that's not cool. It's perfect. You can even squish it. Mm. But look at that nice crumb from all the egg whites. It's an amazing cake. It's an amazing bake. If you haven't made one yourself, it tastes way different than the store. It's really, really good. The next bake is raspberry crumb bars. Rich, buttery, crumbly, with a nice, bright, fruity center. Oh my gosh, they're so good. And there's something you don't always get. And sometimes when you buy them, they're just tasteless. And we're going to make an amazing gluten-free version that you haven't had before because you haven't had my recipe. So I'm really excited to bake with you again. Um, that will be July 5th. July 5th is the next, um, I was going to say episode because this is also my podcast. I'm not really sure what to call it at this point. So July 5th, we're making raspberry crumb bars. I hope you decide to come join me. Thank you, thank you for hanging out with me in the kitchen. I hope you learned something. I hope you had a good time. Maybe some tips. Feel I hope you feel encouraged to try baking gluten-free because you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. I'm not a trained chef. I'm just a, I almost call myself a Jeff. I don't know what a Jeff is. I'm not a trained chef, but I'm a home cook and I've learned how to make gluten-free just like wheat. Only you can eat it, which is even better. All right, so thanks for hanging out. Until next time, have fun in the kitchen, eat something gluten-free.